China has the largest high-speed rail network in the world, spanning over 40,000 kilometers. And of the 10 fastest trains in the world, four are in China. And China's busiest high-speed train, the Beijing-Shanghai Rail, runs 217 miles per hour. The U.S., however, tells a much different story. Its high-speed rail system spans 735 kilometers. And its fastest train, Amtrak's Acela Express, goes just 150 miles per hour, and only for a few minutes on part of the track. Since 2008, China has rapidly built up its high-speed rail network. The U.S. in that time has had several high-speed rail projects shelved or delayed. Here's how the U.S. has fallen behind China in high-speed rail technology. One key difference between the U.S. and China has to do with the tracks the trains run on. In the case of the U.S., as we can see, uh, a lot of the North Sister corridors are based on hundreds of years of the old uh, tracks. There are also tunnels and uh, curvatures and bridges that are really old that cannot really allow the trains to run at a faster speed. These tracks were originally built for freight and passenger trains to use at the same time, so they have many points of intersections and crossings. And the Acela runs on this track, but China has tracks that are dedicated to high-speed rail. They are really required to have a more uh, smoother curves, has also they needed to uh, have a more uh, slower gradients, and so that allowed the trains to run smoothly and safely. One of the reasons trains in America can't reach their top speeds is because of how the tracks are designed. Even though the trains are capable for Amtrak to run 186, they'll never see more than 160 miles per hour because the infrastructure uh, is still being developed and isn't quite there yet. It comes down to curves on the tracks. Many conventional passenger trains in the U.S. only operate 10 to 15 miles per hour faster than freight trains on the curved portion of tracks. But China built its high-speed rail on elevated tracks, traveling on what's called viaducts. So the tolerances and high speed are pretty, pretty precise, pretty tightly defined. And so the track and overhead wires need to be designed in a way to be able to allow those higher speeds. There's also a difference in where stations are located. In China, stations for high speed rails are located in both suburban and rural areas of the country. Whereas in the US, stations are primarily located in urban centers like New York City, Boston, and Washington DC. When you're looking to identify where a high speed line should go, it really starts with where are the two population centers you're trying to connect. And the magic formula is really find two city pairs that have a minimum of three million people on either side and a distance of about two to 500 miles. In order to achieve a higher speed, definitely a dedicated passenger rail system is more needed. Despite the fact that the U.S. has been slow to develop high-speed rail, railroads actually used to dominate interstate transportation. But that shifted during the mid-20th century, when the interstate highway system was born. Since then, American history has been littered with high-speed rail plans that never really took off. Automobile and uh, air travel and uh, car travel has essentially become the major modes of travel in the U.S. To make that kind of behavior change, that basically needs a lot of efforts to help people understand why this is a need to have another mode, and what are the benefits of that. China's high-speed rail, however, consistently had backing from the government, investing billions of dollars, including initial partners with foreign firms. Contracts were awarded on the condition that foreign companies assemble the trains and also train Chinese engineers. So they try to understand the foreign technologies, how it works, but they're also trying to make certain innovations on top of that. Eventually, China developed its own train manufacturing company, the CRRC. And now the CRRC is one of the largest train manufacturers in the world. In the case of China, because uh, it's a central government system, so large infrastructure projects like high-speed rail system can be really developed based on a kind of consistent plan. The U.S. has also had foreign companies come to the country to develop a high-speed rail network but it's been met with several challenges. Take, for example, Illinois. Back in 2019, Nippon Sharyo of Japan tried to build a high-speed rail in the States. However, the company struggled to adapt designs to the US and faced delays in getting new rail cars. And changing administrations doesn't help. 
California approved a plan in 2008 to build a high-speed rail network, but the project has been delayed because of a lack of funding and inconsistent support. The train technology is already here. What we're seeing right now in the U.S. at this specific moment in time is not that dissimilar to what was happening in Europe in the 1970s, where there was initially a lot of concern or objection about trying to do something new. Um, and it wasn't until the first system started to be put in place and people saw the real promise that you know high speed was able to deliver on. And then once the political and public support was behind it, it really took off and grew.